Hello, in this video I want to talk about real-time destruction with Houdini and Unreal. So here in Houdini, let's start with a simple shape, like a platonic shape. This can be quite interesting shape to start with. And we're going to change here the type to this one here, because this one looks pretty cool. Now next up, we want to bring this already in Game Engine. So I'm going to do this by an FBX node. So type in FBX, and then we have here to rob FBX out. So then we can fill in our pad to save out the file, and then press save. So here in Unreal, we then load in the model and we can drag and drop this in our scene. So what we can notice as well is that this is, might be a very small model. So between Houdini and Unreal, there are always 100 units difference. So to be correct, we should uh, multiply this by 100 to have a better scaling between uh, Houdini and Unreal. So now we just re-import it and we should see a now proper scaling in Unreal here as well. Now, next up, let's start making this destructible. So first of all, we would actually need to enable a plugin. So we're going to go here to our plugins. And we're going to search for something called Apex Destruction. So this is what I'm going to use in this video. Later on, Unreal has announced they will do a new Chaos Destruction system. But for now, let's just stick with Apex. This is something that everyone can access right now. Now with our model here, we can right click on it and there should be an option to create a destructible mesh or version. So we will create a new item and we will have this extra menu here. So we will have the extra item and then we can here start uh, defining our destruction of the model. So here we can start fracturing our mesh. Then we have different pieces. So these are the breaking parts. So let's save this and try this out in our viewport. So first of all, we need to swap out the geometry with our uh, destruction mesh. So here, destruction mesh, and I'm going to here do also a simulation. And nothing is actually happening. And that is because we also need to enable our physics. So in the setting of our geometry, let's also enable simulate physics. So it will actually fall down. So now the model is falling down, but it is still not being destroyed. So we have to go back to our settings of our destructible mesh. And we're going to enable here impact damage. So there are further more settings here to do things more specifically. But in this case, we press play now and we have a destructible mesh. So this is a real time calculation of this mesh being uh, destroyed. So what is also interesting is that we can import custom FBX files or chunks. So these chunks you see here are generated by Unreal, but I want to have something more specific or something generated by Houdini and Houdini is pretty good at uh, generating that. So here in Houdini, let's make use of some of the fracturing we have. So the node that I'm going to use is called Material Fracture. So this is a one node that can easily uh, fracture your model quickly. So there are definitely other ways and other tutorials you can check out. Now, what I also want to do before I plug in my model is I also need to fix actually the scaling. So I scaled this up a hundred times but if I want to do a certain a fracturing simulation, I want to actually keep the scale to 1. So I'm going to go here to the platonic shape and set the scale back to 1. And I'm going to use now a transform node to then define our final scale before exporting. So whenever I want to export something, I'm just going to say uh, scale this up 100 times. So in Unreal, we don't have any issues there or it's the same scale there. So now we can plug in our model here. So we have the fractured mesh and then it will automatically generate a fractured version of our model. So you can plug in any model that you want. So I'm here just using some basic shapes and we can also use an explode view to explode these pieces just like you saw in real. So we can see the distant, distance and chunks. So here there are a lot of different settings, but I'm not going to go over each one of them. So at the top here, we can, for example, choose a type. So I'm going to stick to concrete here. And then here, for example, we have then our fracture levels. So currently we have two fracturing levels. We can, for example, remove one if you don't need one. And here we can then also increase the amount. So currently we have five pieces. So if I want, uh, for example, more like 30, we can fill in a number here to actually have more pieces. So you can fill in any number you want. There's also some seed variations and some more settings you can play around with here. 
Now, what is also interesting here with Houdini is that we have automatically here some more details. So we can have edge detailing. So this will basically break up the edges. So you can see here the edges are broken up. They are not like perfectly a geometry cut, but they are more like a natural cut, as you can see here. But we can have a more natural breakup of pieces, like we would see with real debris. Now, one of the downsides this might bring is that currently it's adding a lot of uh, extra geometry. As you can see here, geometry is increased. So what we could do is we could uh, go to our uh, detail size at the top here and start increasing this. So if you increase this, it will actually uh, increase the size of the polygons. And this can be more better for game engines to increase this a bit. So then I want to bring this into the game engine and we're going to use the FBX node here again. But what is special here is that we actually need to make sure that each uh, piece is seen as a separate part in the hierarchy of the FBX. So that's something that is special when you import these FBX chunks. So what we can check here is a attribute. So first of all, we need an attribute that defines each piece. So you can see here by default, it will generate the uh, piece 0, 1, 2, and so forward. So we have access to each individual piece by an attribute. So if this attribute is not there, we can also use a connectivity node to check on uh, the geometry is connected or not. So this will then automatically also, if we switch to primitive, create an attribute here. And you can see that we have then a number going from 0 to how many pieces we have. So we can access again here these pieces. So if we set this to string, we can basically have the same result as we had before with the name. So now let's use that in our FBX node. So let's set a proper uh, location to save. And we're going to now enable build hierarchy from a attribute. So we're going to use that attribute, for example, name or class, that this is a separate piece. So here let's use class and let's, let's now render. So that's done. Also, don't forget to scale. I forgot it almost here. So make sure we are also scaling that up 100 times back again. So now I'm going to test my FBX file by here importing the file. So import FBX. And we're going to search for our FBX file. Make sure you choose the fractured one. And then we can just go to the bottom. You don't have to change any settings and click on import. So here we have our geometry. And what is special, if I open this uh, node, we see our individual nodes for each piece. So that's exactly what I wanted, is that each piece has an individual node or, as, or is seen as an individual geometry. So they are not merged together, they are all separate. So here again for uh, Unreal, let's import FBX chunks. And we're going to choose the fractured file and then click accept. And it should automatically detect this and uh, import these fractured pieces. So you can see that this is the same result as Houdini. So you can see it from the edges. So my edges are not a straight geometry cut, but a more like jacked or noised version. So it's a bit more natural. So that's perfectly working. So here or now you can do a very specific uh, cut in, in Houdini and bring that in uh, in real. So if I now would simulate, we will have the same effect as before, but now with like cooler looking pieces. So once you get the concept of that, now we can start uh, playing around with these fractured pieces. And I made a small game here. I'm still working on this uh, project. Um, and this is basically shooting the debris pieces here. Like you could see, I could shoot a pillar and a pillar would break. And this is the exact same workflow as I just shown you by using Houdini and Unreal to create this effect. So I'm just shooting off these uh, rocks and these pieces will all break apart. Now, one thing I did not talk about is when we press simulate, it's all uh, immediately collapsing into the ground. But that's not really realistic or I don't want that. So we're gonna have to change a few settings here in our destructible mesh to make it a bit better. So we're gonna mainly talk about destruction threshold and impact. But first of all, what is also interesting is going to the hierarchy depth and we're gonna increase this level here to actually have a better or 
higher detailed version of our simulation. So if I increase this to one, it will sort of look at the different depths we have. So zero is the basic model and then one is our fractured model. So once we have that to one, it will again give some better results, but it will also cost a bit more. So here you could see we have actually the same results still, but if I would also now play around with my damage threshold and impact, so damage threshold means how much damage it takes to actually break parts of the object. Damage spread is basically when a certain chunk got damage or impact damage, how quickly that damage spread to the nearby chunks. So let's set this to 100 and press play. And not much is happening. And that is because of the damage spread. So for example, if I would just fill it in zero, which means no spread, and if I would press play now, it will only destroy objects that are being uh, damaged on impact. So it doesn't really spread to nearby pieces. So you can see only the pieces that actually hit the floor now sort of like broke off. So you can play around with that. So maybe you can, instead of zero, give it like a small value and then it will actually destroy a bit more. As you see here, like a few more pieces are falling off. So often this can be like a very low value based on your model, of course, in this case, it's quite low value to play around with. So these are quite interesting settings to play around with. There are definitely a lot more settings you can play around with and test out. There's so much stuff in here, but these are sort of like the main settings I would try to adjust to find already like a bit more interesting destruction effect, like you could see here, like it's not fully breaking anymore. So here's a great industry example from Borderlands 3 by Caitlin. So she made some awesome destruction uh, with Unreal and Houdini, where they did a lot of uh, simulation with Houdini and Unreal to make destruction look really cool and awesome and interactable. So here are some shots. So they would build custom fracture methods in, in Houdini. So, so every debris chunk has a specific size, so they are not too small or too big. And they built like then this custom setups so they can easily make this and import this in Unreal to make some cool destruction effects you see here. And that was this basically it for this video. So this video showed off a bit of the power of Houdini and Unreal for real-time destruction. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like and subscribe and thank you for watching.